Hey Kinect guys, it's Adam from Video Show Me How. And in this quick video, I'm gonna be running through a DIY method of removing and replacing your universal joints using just common tools that you'll have around the workshop so that you can remove your manky old universal joints and replace them at home with some brand new ones. Let's get started. So when your U-joints start to go bad, you can check the video up here on how to test for that. It's really important to replace them as soon as you can. There really is mainly two different ways of being able to do this. In this particular video, we're gonna be doing the DIY version without the need for any sort of press or anything like that. If you do wanna know how to do that one though, check the video up the top. There's a video on the channel on how to do it with the press. So as far as the tools that you're gonna need, it's pretty straightforward. You only really need four things and everyone should have them lying around. You're gonna need a flathead screwdriver, some pliers like these, uh, miniature BFG, and then probably the star of the show is a socket. Now, you ideally would wanna use one of your fully warranted versions, of course. You wanna get the largest size that you can that is gonna sit over the top of the existing universal joint just like that. Now universal joints are very similar and the only main difference with them is where the circlips live. In this case, we have half clips and they go on the inside here, as you can see. Sometimes universal joints will have them on the outside here and they look a little bit like that there, as you can see. The same thing applies regardless of what type of universal joint you have you have to remove the circlips, whether they're the outside or the inside, before you move on to removing the actual U-joint itself. Now, if you had the outers, you would just be using some pliers to grip those and pull them out. Now, in this case, we do have our inner circlips, so you're just gonna need to get your flathead. You're gonna put that in just like this and then give it a tap with a hammer. When you do this, you wanna be really careful not to go too crazy because otherwise you're gonna have your circlip ping off into the distance, never to be found again. Don't stress too much though, because you do have replacements with your new kit. Once you get it out so that it looks just like that, it's just best to get your screwdriver in and you can pull it out just like that. So once you've got the first one out, you wanna spin the whole joint around and remove the circlip on this side and then the other two. So you should have four in total. Now, sometimes it's gonna be really grotty you wanna make sure that you just get in there with a, a flathead like this and dig out all the crud until you expose the actual circlip itself, as you can see there. You really wanna make sure you go digging for it. Don't just assume that it's not there because you can't really proceed to the next step of removing this until all four circlips have been removed. Now I've already gone ahead and removed the other section here. They're exactly the same, so there's one, two, three, four. To do this, you wanna make sure that if you're doing it on a vise, that you have this open enough that it is sitting on the top here like this. One thing to make sure you do is get some penetrating fluid, give this a good spray, just like this, before you actually start hammering this through. So once you've given that a good soak, it's just a matter of lining up your socket here, having a good amount of gap underneath, getting your BFG, and hammering down on here to push this through. All right, so there we go. You can see that it's come all the way through, just like that. From here, we just wanna try and twist it out. In this case, it won't. So it's a matter of getting your Modi grips or your pliers. I had to go to my Modi grips because the pliers wouldn't fit on the end cap but then it's just a matter of pulling out and you can see in there, that's pretty cruddy. There's all our needle bearings that are dry as anything. So glad we did this. This definitely needs a change. So once that side's all done, it's a matter of flipping this around and you wanna do the same thing, but the other way around. So lining your end cap up just like that, making sure that that's nice and square. Get your socket and this is gonna sit in the shoulder of the U-joint itself. Same thing as before, once you're all lined up, hammer on the top here, a couple of big blows will start this off. You wanna push it all the way through and out the bottom end. So once that goes through, you can see that it will go all the way to the shoulder of the U-joint itself. Pull your socket out, and then this guy should be able to slot out just like that. From here, you wanna make sure you give this a good clean. 
inspect the actual holes themselves to make sure that there's no big gouges or anything like that that are sticking out. If there is, you want to use just a, a simple file only on the outside section here, however, not on the inside. So you don't want to be doing any of this action and filing the bore itself. What I would recommend though is getting some wet and dry sandpaper, 1000, 1500 type grit, so nothing too crazy at all, and just giving the inside of the bore a quick clean. That'll really bring it up and make sure that it's as good as it can be so that you're ready to install your new U-joint. All right, so once your yoke is all nice and cleaned up and ready to roll, we're on to the installation of our brand new universal joint. Now installing this with the DIY socket method without the actual press is pretty straightforward. Just a reminder, you wanna make sure you get your socket, in this case, we have a 21 millimeter, which is pretty much spot on because what you want is to make sure that it is almost to the outside of the actual end cap of the universal joint itself. So in this case, 21 mil, it's pretty much bang on. That's the one we're gonna use. So the first part really is just sitting your yoke into a vise, or you can even do this on the ground. If you are doing it on the ground, you just need an extra socket that would act as a catcher over the top here so that you're banging it through. I'll show you that part later. Obviously, if you've got a vise though, it's the way to go. What you wanna do with your new universal joint then is really carefully remove these end caps from one side. So very carefully, you can see there's all our brand new roller bearings, as you can see in there. If any of them do fall down, it's just a matter of getting a flathead screwdriver and pushing them back into place. Just really careful not to contaminate any of your lovely new grease in there pop him to the side for the minute, and then you wanna do the same thing on the opposite side. So just carefully, carefully, carefully twist that out. Same story, double check to make sure we're all good. In this case we are. Pop him to the side. You wanna be able to just slip your new universal joint into the yoke itself. So once you're good to go there, you just want to grab an end cap, and you wanna sort of just sit it in the side here as much as you can, and then push one of the sides through until it goes as far as it can. That will give you one end. You wanna grab your second end cap and just slot him in again, just as far as you can. Now, obviously you're not gonna be able to push those together, but you just wanna get them ready to go just like that. So once you're all aligned, you want a nice hard flat surface. The back end of a vise is perfect for this. You just wanna make sure that it is straight and that both caps are completely straight and lined up. Once you're at this stage, grab your socket. It's just a matter of sitting that straight on top there like that, getting your BFG and having a good couple of hard taps straight down. All right, perfect. So from here, we're pretty well good to go on this side. As far as knowing if you've gone in far enough, what you wanna be looking for is the circlip channel just down in there. And if there's enough of a gap there to get your circlip in. You always wanna check the other side there as well. Of course, I recommend getting a circlip in one side so that if we need to make any adjustments on the other, like this one probably needs a little bit more of a gap. That way we can hit it down and it's gonna snug the U-joint even further into its cap. So once you've got the ends in, grab your nice new circlips here, line it up just like that. Grab your little hammer or big hammer give it a little tap and grab your screwdriver and do the same just to make sure that it's properly seated. Now you might notice that it's a little bit hard to turn. A little trick to that is just to hit the ears of the housing itself with your BFG, nothing too crazy, don't get stuck in, but a couple of little taps. And that will loosen everything right up. So it's recommended to do that. That just sort of final sort of seats, I guess, the needle bearings and makes it nice and smooth. So once one side is done, same process for the other. So there we go, one fully installed universal joint. Pretty sort of straightforward job, really. Uh, once you know how, I reckon the DIY version is still uh, a nice easy way to go, to be honest. And if you are not doing them all the time and you don't have a press, this method uh, has served me well and works like a treat. 
Well, that's it for another video, guys. I hope you found it helpful as always. Share where you see fit. If anyone else is trying to tackle this job, flick them the, uh, flick them the link so that they can learn along. If you found it helpful, give me a thumbs up in the section below. Even leave a comment on which method that you prefer to use when you're changing your universal joints, whether it's sort of the DIY version, whether it's using an actual press, a big H press, or what have you. As always, I really hope you found this useful for your particular application. Subscribe if you haven't already, hit the bell so you've got the notifications. And other than that, I hope that you have an amazing day and I will see you in the next video. Cheers, guys.